how you want to stack that folder so you have everything in it. When you go into the home, you don't have to run back outside for any other materials. Two, learning your UBI presentation book, your SETS presentation book. Knowing and understanding your presentation steps and understanding that you have to practice, practice, practice this just like big league ball players. Let's first look at how you stack your FCGPS folder. This is the My Final Wishes Organizer, which you will be receiving in your supply order. And it comes already with three items in it. And I'll show you those three items. These others you will want to add. You'll want to add your confidential questionnaire. Ladies and gentlemen, always put your cards in here. These four corners can be a little challenging, so it's something you may want to do at home. And then here, before you leave this photo in every home in ink, write your name and your direct phone number. People keep these folders, and sometimes they may give them a, someone the card or make it lost. But when they open that folder, you want your name and number to be there for months to come. That household. Now, the first thing you want to add is going to be your confidential questionnaire. We're going to teach you the importance of this. Add your questionnaire. You want to add your My Final Wishes book. Now, the Funeral Consumer Garden Society, this is the one item. One of the three that's going to be in this photo when you get it, so you just be at, that'll be there. The general cost estimate is the second item in this, in this photo when you order a complete photo from supply. And so is this FCGS membership form. So these three documents will be there, and you just put them in this order in the folder. Next, you want to add your application, your final expense application. Then your authority to honor payments. And your referral request sheet, because we are going to teach you to ask for referrals. And then any brochure, these two brochures that we have, make sure they have your name and your phone number on them. So you want to leave these in the home. So if they want to refer you to someone, they can just hand them that brochure and say, call my agent. All right, that's how you stack your folder. Now, number three, preparation step, knowing and understanding the selling cycle and your presentation steps. Let's take a look at the selling cycle here. The first thing you want to have in the selling cycle is activity. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a numbers business. The more people that you see, the more people you contact, the more presentations you do, the higher your opportunity for applications. So it's prospecting it's amongst the selling cycle, that includes your activity. Number two is your warm up. That's what happens when you get in the door. I'm going to teach you how to get in the door, which is 90% of your work. Fact finding is done with the in home questionnaire. Oops, sorry about that. In fact, fine. Okay, what's this going on? Right. Establish the problem here with your award winning presentation. Intensify the problem when you give them the My Final Wishes book. Offer the solution of the funeral advantage plan. In closing, overcome any objections and secure your check. And number nine here is number eight here is policy delivery, persistency, and preparation. Now, we do have an order of the funeral advantage presentation. Telling cycle number one is prospecting, so you want to get into the door. Telling cycle number two is a warm up. There's an outside warm up and an inside warm up. That outside warm up is your clean car. You're getting quickly out of the car when you park it on the street so that you're not blocking the driveway. You move quickly to the uh, front door and knock on the door and do your presentation scripts. Once inside, selling cycle number three is fact finding. You want to use your questionnaire to find the facts that you need about that customer to help you move through the presentation. So it's like before establish the problem with your film advantage presentation book, your award winning presentation, then intensify that problem when you give them the My Final Wishes book using your funeral director's voice tone. So it's like the number five is a solution. We offer the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society, which can, in conjunction with Lincoln Heritage is a funeral advantage plan. That's what makes us difference, and that is what we sell. We sell the Funeral Consumer Guidance Society, not insurance. Number seven is your closing. We're going to take it all away by saying, Ms. Jones, I'm not sure if you qualify for this special senior program. I need to ask you a few medical questions, okay? And you're asked to have questions on the application. Compare all the medications with the modified medication list or do your verification call. And now you know what they qualify for. So you say, wow, Ms. Jones, not only do you qualify, you qualify for our first day coverage or you qualify for our modified coverage. Then you present the funeral cost estimate and explain to them the good, the better, and the best. And after that, you show the DVD and you simply transition by saying, now, Ms. Jones, I want to show you a short video that explains the Funeral Consumer Garden Society. 
while they're watching the video, you're going to take out your rate book, calculate your premiums for your funding presentation, you're going to write those premiums on your SCGS membership form, and just put it back in your folder, finish watching the DVD with them. And when that DVD finishes, you can say, Ms. Jones, you know, most of my clients say they've never seen a plan quite as detailed as ours. Wouldn't you agree? Shake your head, yes. And then you're going to present the funding amounts. You'll put the FCGS membership form in front of them and say, Ms. Jones, you know, these are our good, better, and best funding options. Which plan best fits into your budget? Ladies and gentlemen, you're quiet now. Let them talk. Once they tell you which plan fits in their budget, you're going to say, great. Now, who do you want your primary beneficiary to be? And write that name on your application. Now, you take out the authority to honor, and at the very honor is the conditional receipt. You don't tear it off. Simply fill it out their name, the amount that they chose, slide it in front of them and say, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, in order to get you started today, I need a check for 5863 made payable to Lincoln Heritage. Don't open your mouth. They will talk right now if they haven't spoken at all. Once you all decide that that's the amount that they want and they're ready to move forward, you're going to continue to complete your application. And as you start your application, you're going to look up and say your referral script. You're going to ask for the referrals, request that your client contact all referrals given to let them know you'll be coming by to see them. Place a referral sheet in front of your applicant and use a referral script, Mr. Wilson's script. Or you can say, Mr. Wilson, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, my company requires this request. Can you help me? Then you want to complete these documents. We're going to have a lot more training on referrals to get, ladies and gentlemen. We want you to get really, really effective. One lead should take you to 10 other people. Then you complete your authority to honor your FCGS estimate form. If you need the supplemental app, you use it. If the child rider app, you do use it. If you need to do a sequence number call, you do it. You will make your verification call. Put your client on the phone to see what verify the information on your application. Compile your FCGS folder with what you want to leave behind. And compile your documents to submit to Lincoln Heritage. Then you do a final review with your client and tell them what's going to happen next. Your homework assignment is to complete the month on the wishes book. Policy delivery and funeral planning will occur in a couple of weeks. You'll be back to deliver the policy personally in three to four weeks. So tell them to be ready and then thank them. Then you want to leave by saying, Ms. Jones, who lives next door? Do you know them well? Would you want me able to just meet them to me so I can just tell them about this great opportunity? Work that entire community, that entire neighborhood. It is your goal mine. Okay, now let's practice our funeral advantage presentation here. A few tips on the warm-up. Number one, carry a small bag, if a bag at all. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't use a roller bag. It looks like you're going to be staying a long time. Don't do that. A small bag, not much bigger than your notebook, your presentation book, or something like a small computer bag if you need to carry different things in it with you, computer, stuff like that. I don't mean a computer, excuse me, a calculator. You can do that, but nothing lonely. Small. Your demeanor, your style should be courier style. You look at to deliver cakes quickly, and that's the demeanor that you should look like. Just like a courier, like FedEx or UPS. When you knock or ring the doorbell, step back three to six feet. Step completely away from that door. You don't want to be on top of them when they open the door. They should be able to look out at people and see you from head to toe. And have a little song in your heart, a little melody. Will be going on. Make yourself interested. And when they come to the door, stretch your hand out with your business card, extend it to them. You say your, your script. UBI shuffle. Always dust your feet off in preparation of entry. Always dust your feet. It's a sign of respect for the home. When it's inside, stand beside the door and allow the person to secure their home. While they're doing that, you scan the room for something to talk about. Find a common denominator. Your objective is to get to the kitchen table where you take your folder from your bag, open it up, take out your questionnaire, and begin your interview. Now, this is what you should have in that small bag. You're carrying a small bag, two to three folders, your presentation book, a portable DVD player, and if not a portable DVD player, then definitely have it on your phone or tablet, and make sure that it will work whether you have internet or not. You can also carry your rate book, calculator, pens, delivery notices, business cards, and extra My Final Wishes books. Extra folders, you want to keep them in a small plastic storage file in your car. There's some nice little small ones you can buy by $10, $15. It'll fit right down in the floorboard of your passenger uh, floorboard there in the passenger side of your car. Great, we have a 
as your organizer, you're inside, you're in the home, you take out your folder, you have your questionnaire, you say, Mr. Mr. Jones, let me just ask you a few questions to get to know you better. Now, Ms. Jones, looking at the lead, I have your name is Gail Jones, is that correct? Right. Now, Ms. Jones, are you married? Is there Mr. Jones? If so, then you put Mr. Jones' name here. This also lets you know whether you're dealing with a married couple. If you're dealing with a married couple right here, then you want to say, well, when will your spouse be in? Not this, and Lincoln Heritage requires me to have both the husband and the wife here. So let me set a time up to come back when I can talk to you and your husband. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to do a one-legger. And those two names up top gives you the opportunity immediately to find out if you're working with a one-legger. Yes, I have a husband. He's not here right now. Oh, no, no, no. There's no husband. It's just me here. No, there's no wife. It's just me. I'm not married. That's what you want. Great. So let me ask Ms. Jones, what did you have in mind when you sent this in, showing them to Bella? Have you attended a funeral in the past two years? Yes or no? If yes, whose was it? How did they handle it? Have you ever or were you then financially responsible for it? Were you then or have you ever been financially responsible for funeral arrangements? If they have, dig in a little bit. Whose was it? How did the family handle it? Those questions you're interviewing. Who will be in charge of your funeral arrangements someday? And you want to get a name here because you're going to put that name right here. So Jonathan, great. So is Jonathan in a financial position today to take care of a funeral for you, Ms. Jones, if you die today? Six. So how do you intend for your funeral arrangements to be paid? Now, Ms. Jones, will you, Jonathan, Another family member be responsible for paying for a plan like this. If you like it, will you be paying for it, or will another member of your family need to be here to pay for it? This is when you find out. Start eliminating your objections at the end. So she tells you, you know, if I like it, I have to pay for it. Well, you know, my children take care of everything. Well, Miss Jones, maybe we need to bring your child in. Schedule time when I can talk to both of you. Are you currently carrying any final expenses, burial, or other life coverage? Want to find out. Do you have cremation or traditional? Let me talk about this one for a minute. Are you carrying, currently carrying any final expense barrier or other life coverage? If they say yes, just put a mark there. Congratulations, Mr. Jones. Glad you had the wisdom to prepare your family. That's great. They say no, just make a note. Do you want a cremation or a traditional funeral? If cremation, how much do you estimate it will cost for a cremation? The traditional, what's your estimated cost for a traditional funeral, including cask and a ball? Ms. Jones, have you given your family written instructions for your final arrangements? Do they know you want to be cremated? Do they know what style of traditional funeral you want? And which funeral home in the area would your family use? Get the name. Do you own a cemetery plot? Yes. If no, if yes, where is it? If no, Ms. Jones, let me just share the average cost of a funeral home, I mean, uh, of a cemetery, including the plot, home being posted in the grave. And a small monument, normally around $3,000. You may want to factor that in as you're planning the amount of money you want to leave available for, for your funeral. Would you remain to be shipped out of the city of state? Okay. Just one second. There we go. Would you remain to need to be shipped out of the city of state? If travel is necessary for the body, Ms. Jones, there's an additional charge at the funeral home. Sometimes I know. Shipping a body from the East Coast to the West Coast could be as much as two thousand dollars, two three thousand dollars. Ms. Jones, how do you pay your monthly bills? Same as a check, and never look enough. Just ask. Now, have you used any form of tobacco in the past twelve months? Have you been diagnosed with a terminal illness, AIDS, or HIV? Are you currently bedridden, incarcerated in a care facility, hospitalized, or receiving hospice care? I know it's a funny question, but I have to ask it. So you just asked your unconditional, your uninsurable, Sarah. So you know whether they're insurable or not from the beginning. Are there any children under the age of 18 whose lives you'd like to cover? And do you take any medications? What are they for? You have your questionnaire there. You finish the questionnaire. Now you take out your presentation book and you say, Ms. Jones, what I'd like to do now is share some facts about your final experience. That is the one thing you cannot predict, prevent, evade, or avoid. But we can't prepare for the realities. There comes a time to talk about the inevitable. Although it's not easy, it is a necessary part of life. Let me ask you a question, Ms. Jones. Just think about it. If you died today, what would your loved ones be doing tomorrow? So 
some of these things. It shows you know there's a problem in America and it's a high cost of final expense. It's the fact that when a family member dies, it costs money. You have many people never give it a moment's thought. This is just a little sharp chart. You're in your 60s, Ms. Jones. You know, statistically, Ms. Jones, if we had 100 people in your home today at age 60, do you know that 62 out of 100 of them will die? Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. You use the age that's appropriate for the person that you're sitting with. These are just statistics. It happens every day, Ms. Jones. And the average final expense cost ranges from 7000 to 12000 And this is a problem for most people. Have you provided for your final expenses and other obligations? I will let death in your family need dollars or debts. Let's take a look at some of the final expenses. This is from the National Funeral Directors Association. Has, oh, Association. Hasn't been updated since 2014. They haven't changed them yet. So what we have here, Ms. Jones, are the general price list surveys from some local funeral homes nationwide that they did. I want to show you this. There we go. Off the screen. All right. Now, Ms. Jones, a funeral home. I'm sorry. Ms. Jones, a cemetery. Let me get this right here. Ms. Jones, a traditional funeral is normally two separate charges. You have a charge at the funeral home and a charge at the cemetery. So let's take a look at the funeral home services. There's a professional service charge, non declinable. You can't get out of it. Just to walk in the door averages about $2,000. If there's embalming that's necessary for viewing, $600. Preparation of the body, hair, makeup, etc., in the 200 to 300. Visitation or viewing, $400. A funeral at the funeral home, four to $500. Transfer remains just to get the body from where the loved one passed to the funeral home, $300. You need a hearse or additional service cards for anywhere from two to $300 per vehicle. You know, when you go to a funeral home, you sign this little uh, book, like a memorial book. Well, the family gets that, and along with some thank you cards, and the average is about $155. We haven't even gotten to the caskets yet. They can rain anywhere, anywhere from $2,000 to $12,000. And a vault or liner, which is required in every public cemetery in America, can run you anywhere from $1,500 to $16,000 alone. Now, that's just the funeral home. Take a look at the cemetery. The individual grave, which is just the land, anywhere from two hundred to twelve thousand. We've seen them as high as a hundred thousand dollars up near a fountain. And markers. Now, Ms. Jones, you do want a marker to note your time here on Earth, right? Okay, so Ms. Jones, you know a typical rectangular marker, they run anywhere from four fifty to three thousand dollars. And any type of upright structure like these here can run anywhere from eighteen hundred to six thousand dollars. So it's real easy to see how your total burial cost average could be anywhere from forty eight hundred. $15,000. Now, Ms. Jones, Social Security's benefit hasn't changed in over 60 years, and they still will pay only a one time payment of $255, and it goes to the spouse of the minor child. The veteran, Ms. Jones, or veteran benefits will pay up to $734, and you have to qualify for those benefits. Medical expenses can be a burden to the family because 20% of deaths occur suddenly without warning. Many deaths, 80% occur after prolonged illness, which eats into financial, into your savings and personal assets. Final illness or nursing home costs can create huge expenses and substantially reduce your estate or even leave unpaid debt. And 45% of all lifetime medical expenses are incurred during a person's final illness. We show this real easy to see how everything you've accumulated in your lifetime, everything you've saved and accumulated in your lifetime can be gone. And yet there are still funeral expenses left to be paid. Those deaths can cut your household income by 50% if you're the wage, if you're not the wage earner, if you're the sole wage earner, by as much as 100%. It's really easy to see how traditional funeral could cost anywhere from seven to $11,000. Let me ask you, would you or your family be prepared for these financial burdens? What are your choices? Rely on family and friends. Complete your personal assets and savings. I have your family borrowed money. You can spare your family the cost of an emotional drain at the time of death by creating a Lincoln Heritage Funeral Advantage Plan. 
you know, we recommend you two things to be prepared. Number one, plan in advance. Complete your My Final Wishes book and your SUGS plan to pay you. Ms. Jones, we offer family support services. The Funeral Consumer Guidance Society is an independent organization dedicated to helping funeral purchasers get a fair deal. You decide the style of funeral you want. SUGS will keep your wishes safe and secure on file. Your loved ones get a 24-hour toll-free service number to call in time of need. And that suggests we'll immediately go into action, comparing up to three different funeral homes to find the best price available for your family. Families can save an average of thousands of dollars, $600. Ms. Jones, this is our gift to you, the My Final Wishes book. This book will help you successfully handle all the various tasks thrust upon you by my death. I sincerely appreciate and love you, and thank you with all my soul. Now, Ms. Jones, this first page is information about yourself. It seems simple, but Ms. Jones, if this isn't known, your family can tear your house apart just trying to find it. Ms. Jones, the second page, people to verify is very important. Throughout life, we meet people and establish relationships that our family members would know. So a lot of the local people that you know now that you would like to have notified to help your family, to notify others, to be a blessing to the family. You need to write those names down here. Ms. Jones, can you think of anybody right now that you'd like to have had it notified locally? With your permission, Ms. Jones, I'd like to write my name and number here. As your friend and agent and my phone number so the family knows I can be contacted. This is your referral page. You want to get as many people as you can here. Take your time. Locally. So obituary information, Ms. Jones. This is a basic outline for your obituary. Your memorial service. How do you want your memorial service. What are your desires for your memorial service? Do you want a particular funeral director or pastor? What do you want done with your personal items? Clothing is a big one for traditional funeral. Do you want something from your current wardrobe or you want something new? Let the family know so they're not arguing. What do you want for your pallbearers? Better yet, who definitely do you not want? Or do you have some favorite songs, a favorite flower? Do you like contributions to go somewhere? Let your family know. Then if you already have your cemetery plot, you want to give them the information that they need here. If not, tell them what you would like. And if cremation is your choice, then how would you like or what would you like done with the remains? Funding is very important. And Ms. Jones, if you're receiving any type of benefits, write down the contact information and codes that the family would need to have those stopped. And if you have an additional plan, put it here. Put a big star here and put your link in here that you feel like that is planned here, Ms. Jones. So your family knows to call me first or FCGS first. Location of documents, you may or may not have all of these, but the ones you do have, it's a good idea to have them all in one place and let your son Jonathan know where they are by. Any assets, Ms. Jones, you have bank accounts? What type of accounts do you have? What bank is that with? What address of the property that you own, you own your home, home here? What type of credit cards do you have, Ms. Jones? Do you have a safe deposit box? Some of your final thoughts, Ms. Jones, that you want to leave with your family, you want to take the time to write those down, additional ones that you might, how you view life. And this last page is a memorial checklist, everything you would need to know to have a really nice memorial service. Ms. Jones, this is our gift to you. We give it to them. Now, Ms. Jones, I'm here to tell you about the Funeral Advantage Plan. Your advantage plan is a two-part program. It is cash insurance benefits, yes, provided by Lincoln Heritage, but most importantly, it's family support services provided by Funeral Consumer Guardian Society. You see, the funeral advantage plan makes things go smooth and easy for the loved ones who will be in charge of buying your funeral someday. Let's talk about our family support services, Ms. Jones, because this is what we market, and this is what I want you to really understand. I'm not here to sell you insurance. This is about planning your funeral Get it in place and leaving an easy transition for your family. The Funeral Consumer Guidance Society is an independent organization dedicated to helping funeral purchases get a fair deal. Ms. Johnson, you decide the style of funeral you want. You get a two page My Final Wishes form that makes us fast and simple, and we'll complete that together. FCGS keeps your wishes safe and secure on file. Your loved ones get a 24 hour toll free service number to call in time of need. We will immediately go into action, comparing up to three different funeral homes of your choice to find the best price available for your family, saving families on an average $1,800 or more on traditional funerals and $600 or more on cremations. Family will receive these three. You'll get these 
membership cards when I bring your plan back. One is for you. You have four for each additional family member that you want to be aware of your plan. And I'll be more than happy to deliver those for you, Ms. Jones, so they'll understand exactly what you have here and how wonderful this plan is. This is the pages that we'll be filling out. Final wishes part A. This lists your vital statistics. Who you want to be in charge? Your funeral service request here. The three funeral homes. It says, where do you want SVGS to shop on behalf of your loved ones for the best value for your funeral home? We will fiercely negotiate pricing with funeral homes to get the lowest possible price for your family. Help them save money and get everything that they want, Ms. Jones. Do you want traditional burial or cremation? Let them know. Funeral Part B. Ms. Jones, you told me you had another insurance policy. That's wonderful because you can use SCGS with other plans as well. You can allow SCGS to initiate the um, claim for that policy, get in contact with your beneficiary, execute everything seamlessly for your beneficiary. We don't touch your money. Just tell them how you want. You will call SCGS for more details on this, but it can be used in association with what you already have in place for your family. If you're in the military, those records here, any special instructions, what do you want to do with your personal effects? What newspaper do you want your bitch Mary in? And ladies and gentlemen, please take a look at this. We do not sell pet insurance, but the FCGS, Funeral Consumer Garden Society, plan allows for a your client who loves a pet to leave funding for that pet. They can leave the animal's name, the person who will care for the pet, the veterinarian who will care for the pet. And right here, how much money do you want to leave in the care of your animal? Oh, yes. These are copies of the business, I'm sorry, of your Funeral Consumer Guidance Society membership ID card. Right. This one will be for yourself, Ms. Jones. This one will be for Jonathan. I'll make sure you guess it. These other three, Ms. Jones, I want you to think of the names of the people that you want me to take these to when I get bring your policy back to you so that they will be aware of your funeral advantage plan. And I'll make sure that they understand that I'm the first contact for funeral advantage, Funeral Consumer Guidance Society. Now, last year, Ms. Jones, we say we can have these clients $13 million on final expense. But more importantly, we helped the family save over $14,000, all at no extra cost to the policyholder. <laughs> the second thing you want to do, Ms. Jones, is apply for a Lincoln Heritage Funeral Advantage Plan, which will pay cash to your beneficiary for funeral burial and other expenses. Lincoln Heritage Cash Insurance Benefit. Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company is one of the nation's leaders in helping co people cover their funeral costs and other final expenses. We are the number one final expense provider in America today. We've been in business over 55 years and over 50 plus years. And we're known throughout the country with a very good reputation. That's a reputation of paying plan claims quickly. Your benefits get paid within 24 hours. Uh, for whole life benefits up to $35,000. There's no health examination, just a few health questions. We have an easy one page application, and most people qualify even with health issues. The rates of benefits are locked in for the life of the policy, they won't change. And we do offer accidental death and dismemberment as a bonus. It's a wonderful plan here. Uh, accidental death and dismemberment also includes transport of mortal remains, Ms. Jones. So, should you die? Away from home, it'll pay to get the body back. Lots of pluses. You know, Miss Jones, this has to be done. The choice is whether you do it today or your loved ones do it later. So let me ask you, which check would you rather pay? A large lump sum to your local funeral home in the thousands of dollars or a small monthly premium that fits comfortably in your monthly budget? Great. Now, Miss Jones, I've sat here and discussed with you all these great benefits that my company has to offer. But you know, Miss Jones, I want to be certain that you qualify for these benefits. I need to ask you a few health questions to make sure that you do qualify. Or you can say something like, you know, Ms. John, I was on those, I really don't know if you qualify for this special senior program. Pause. I need to ask you some medical questions. So you're going to ask some medical questions on the application. Your significant health conditions here. All right. Cross checks and medications. On the modified medication list, do 
your telephone verification call on all calls. It's your modified medication list. If the bed is on this list, they are modified ladies, no questions asked. And then Ms. Jones, not only do you qualify, you qualify for a first aid coverage, or you qualify for our modified coverage. Now you know exactly what they qualify for. So you get ready to introduce them to the type plans that we have. Ms. Jones, we have three plans. We have a good, a better, and a best. On a national average, you know, um, on a national average, Funeral Consumer Guidance Society does a national average for there we go, traditional funerals. We have three plans, a good, a better, and a best. Now, Ms. Jones, let's say we're in the state of Georgia right now. How much does it say a good quality funeral in Georgia is? Sixty-seven fifty. Ms. Jones, can I get you to just write 7000 for me right there? How much is a better quality? 8500 so Let's just write 9000 there. You want to get them involved. Get them right, and that's good. And the best quality is 11000 Yes, ma'am, it's 11000 right there. Now, if you're in the state of New Jersey, which we have, you notice the averages are a little higher. New Jersey is 8000 10000 and 12000 for New Jersey. Cost of living is a little more on the national averages. So you know that. Now, Michelle, let me show you what is some examples of the type of services you can get. These are examples, not what your family is locked into. 20 gauge casket. Caskets come in gauges 20, 18, and 16. The smaller the number, the thicker the steel wall. The steel wall. So with the good, it's normally a 20 gauge steel or pine casket. Get a grave liner. This is a concrete box with holes in the bottom. Water runs around and through. Transportation could be a casket coach, a clergy coach, a flower car. Flowers could be a casket spray of good piece. <laughs> with the better, you could possibly get a little nicer casket, an 18 gauge steel or old casket. And here you get a burial vault. It's a completely steel box that the casket goes down in. And it might have concrete top seal or a plastic liner or a steel air seal on each other. Transportation again, casket coach, clergy coach, flower car, and flowers normally the casket spray and lid piece. And with a best quality funeral, they have a 16 gauge casket of the thickest steel, stainless steel, copper, cherry, oak, maple, walnut. You get a barrier vault here with concrete top seal, with a stainless steel liner or a galvanized steel air seal. Transportation, casket coach, clergy coach, flower car, limousine included. And flowers would be in the cast and spray lid piece. This would include a family piece. So there's some options in there. All three of our services include the basic services of the funeral director and staff, use of the facilities at the funeral home or a place of your choice for the service, transfer of remains to the funeral home, all your embalming, cosmetics, cleaning, casketing, 